Welcome back to the Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Rena Espayat. I've been on a bit of a Rena Espayat kick. Her most recent collection, And After All, is just so good. And I ran across another poem that I wanted to share with you. I think I've read one other one in the last month or two from this collection. Her work has appeared in many journals, anthologies, and websites and has earned national and international awards, including the T.S. Eliot Prize in Poetry, the Richard Wilbur Award, the Howard Nemiroff Prize, the May Sarton Award, the Robert Frost Tree at My Window Prize for Translation, several honors from the New England Poetry Club, the Poetry Society of America, the Ministry of Culture of the Dominican Republic, and a Lifetime Achievement Award from Salem State College. So needless to say, she is one of our very best working poets. She has published 10 full-length books and three chapbooks comprising poetry, essays, and short stories in both English and her native Spanish. And the poem that I'm going to read today is called Look Long Enough, and it's from And After All, as I said, her 2018 collection. Highly recommend this collection, which is from Abel Muse Press. This is how it goes. Look long enough at anything you know, and you will cease to know it or not cease but struggle to reclaim it, wonder whether you ever wore that shirt hanging just so over your absent body, every crease complex with shadows, or you pull a feather from your old comforter, and altogether altered by the flight of phantom geese, familiar sheets repel you, or two eyes you've loved for years close in a daunting peace, asleep, so that you listen for the flow of breath, for words to help you recognize a face you fail to find in this disguise, although you knew it well one look ago. One of the things I, I love about Rena Aspayat's poetry is the way it builds. Um, there's, a, there's a slow pace to it. Um, there's a lovely cadence to it. It... it it asks all these questions until it builds to some defining image at the end, which leaves you asking your own questions. It reminds me a lot of the work of uh, people like Richard Wilbur, and so it's not surprising that Espayad worked on, on translating Wilbur's work into Spanish for many years. In fact, I think that's something she won an award for. In the end, or at the end of a poem, I often find myself wondering, wait, is this a melancholy poem? Or... Um, a grateful poem. Is it a, is it a joyful poem or a sad poem? And I'm never entirely sure that it's any one of those things. I think all of those things is, are often wrapped up into her work, as with most great poems. But I imagine that that this sort of complex um, relationship with with looking at something is common for poets who spend their life observing and and even the idea of observing words. You ever you ever look at a word? say the word the <laughs> t-h-e and instinctively it seems fine like it seems normal we use it all the time but the more you look at it the more you uh take time to write out the letters and the, the more strange it looks this happens to me all the time and i imagine that experience happens a lot to poets but i think it happens to anybody who's just paying attention or maybe even if you're not someone who you know thinks of yourself as someone who's paying attention. One day you'll be looking at something or you'll, you'll be doing something normal like uh, making the bed or, or looking at your spouse asleep or your child asleep or you know, hanging up a shirt in the closet that you've worn many times and never really taken stock of. And you're, you're moved, you're, you're, you're kind of taken out of yourself um, and something strikes you about it in a brand new way. Like, like you know the thing quite intimately, but on the other hand, it, it seems to be staring back at you as if, as if it's, you know, taken a new shape or a new form. Those, I think, are the sort of moments that perhaps remind us that we're alive, that, that the world is changing and evolving and, and um, that there's constant life around us, even in things that have seemed so sure or so much the same way for so long. It's both terrifying and beautiful that things change. You know, I think that's why she ends with the idea of someone who you know really well asleep, who one moment you know them and the next moment you think, who is this mysterious person that I thought I knew so well? We're constantly being reminded that we don't know people and things as well as we think we do. And there's, as I said, both beauty and, and sort of a terrifying factor in that. And 
And I think many of the great poets are touching on that, that gray area. So here once again is Look Long Enough by Rena Espayat. Look long enough at anything you know and you'll cease to know it. Or not cease, but struggle to reclaim it. Wonder whether you ever wore that shirt hanging just so over your absent body, every crease complex with shadow. Or you pull a feather from your old comforter and altogether altered by the flight of phantom geese, familiar sheets repel you. Or two eyes you've loved for years close in a daunting peace. Asleep, so that you listen for the flow of breath, for words to help you recognize a face you fail to find in this disguise, although you knew it well one look ago. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you.